it's part of what's gotten us here is there's women have never been talking about their sexual health, about their sex lives, about their vaginas, about menopause, about, you know, these are things that have always been held in the shadows. And so if you were lucky, maybe you had an, a mom or a cool aunt that was talking to you about this stuff, but I didn't, you know, I didn't really have that. No, I didn't and neither did any of my friends, like right? at least my general, like, yeah. Mm -mm. So there's just a lot of destigmatizing that's still going on. And I'm so happy to see our generation really taking on this journey of menopause, but again, bringing it to a younger generation and, and really educating people in their 30s, even 20s about how to prepare and optimize for this journey. And, you know, it's important too, because we're seeing this drop in hormones younger and younger. Yeah. I mean, it could be environmental, mm -hmm. but I see 20 people in their 20s that are suffering from PCOS and endometriosis, anxiety, depression, mm -hmm. all the symptoms of low hormones. So it's happening younger, right? And, and let's younger. talk about endometriosis because that's a huge topic. It's something I'm really passionate about. I have someone very close to me that, you know, suffered and was really misdiagnosed, not diagnosed. And it created so many medical, you know, issues and even emergency surgery. And so what causes endometriosis? What is even endometriosis for the person listening? Yeah, I think it's important because it's com it's really common. It's really common. And people just think it's maybe, I don't know what people think, but there is could be, a, yeah, or yeah. like um, a painful period or, because right. we know that it could be, was it our tolerance level? And so it's not just a painful period, right? So we know that the uterine lining grows outside, is growing outside of the uterus. And so when it happens, it's not supposed to be outside of the uterus. So when it happens to grow outside of the uterus, it causes, it does cause um, an immune response. Mm -hmm. So it causes the uterus to become inflamed. So that's one problem. But the real problem is that the immune system recognizes that the uterine tissue is not supposed to be there. Like foreign tissue. It's or... foreign tissue. Mm -hmm. So that it mounts an immune response, antibodies to it, as well as like cytokines. And so you get a whole body systemic inflammatory response, which is that, and it hasn't been classified as a true autoimmune disease. But you, when you, th you have chronic inflammation, a chaotic immune system, and autoantibodies, you have antibodies to that endometrial tissue. That's like all of the components of a recipe, mm -hmm. you know, for an autoimmune disease. Um, and yeah, and then you get a really a lot of pain because these these um, can trap nerves, right? So the mm -hmm. tissue can like trap a nerve, it can trap blood, and then the blood causes even more inflammation. Uh, you can form like adhesions, which are basically these like bands of scar tissue. And so the adhesions will cause the, um, the uterus to stick to the fallopian tubes, to the ovaries, to the rectum, to the bladder, right? Like everything that's like here can like stick together. And so when they stick together like that, and then when women, when a woman who has it moves, for example, mm -hmm. like during intercourse or um, a bowel movement, even just going to the bathroom, she has extreme pain. So this is pain outside of a period. So like she's not just doesn't have to have a period to have pain. She can have like sex and have pain but because of these ad adhesions and things that aren't supposed to be there. And so when you look at well, what's causing that, well, what, what stops the growth of endometrial lining? Progesterone. Mm -hmm. Right. And progesterone is arguably the main, most abundant hormone in women. And when it goes down, then this endometrial tissue can proliferate because it's not being stopped. And we also know that progesterone is the main modulator of the immune system. So when women get pregnant and their progesterone levels get really high, autoimmune disease goes away. Like celiac goes away. Lupus goes away. Like we have studies to show that it goes I didn't away. I know that. I haven't heard that. So it's like we know Progesterone binds directly to B cells and T cells, organizes the immune system, regulates it. That's why women can have babies and not destroy their own baby, right? It's why it keeps the immune system from destroying the baby. It's like the beautiful thing that women can do mm -hmm. that makes us like so like, per, you know, yeah, women, it's women. It's a miracle. <laughs> and it is, that's why progesterone is like so important for women. It like really is core to even her immune system functioning. Mm -hmm. So her neuroendocrine system, her immune system, 